when the market is ready to kind of tap out at least tap out short term the case study is the worst the dreck of the dreck right in yiddish the dreck of the dreck the crap of the crap always comes out and always makes the last one that's kind of like that welcome to access a trader the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success profitability and longevity thank you for joining us Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. I apologize, there was no recap uh, video last night. Uh, just like last Tuesday, both of my kids had uh, practices in two different towns, so uh, my wife couldn't make it, so I had to do the impossible and being two places at the same time. So I apologize. I know there was a video that Kyler uh, put out last night. Um, um, I believe it was a, a, a clip from uh, the webinar. Um, so if you guys watched last night, that was the video that went out. So let's talk about the tape. Um, so we had this magnificent rally. We're, we really have. This is two and a half weeks of absolutely uh, phenomenal aggressive uh, bull market action as aggressive as everything was for the three months that we broke below the 200 day moving average uh, this is how aggressive it is now for the last two and a half weeks on the upside and if you look at uh, the cues just just going from the cues uh, you'll quickly see that we've literally had three down days and this is also from the double bottom uh, all the way from February the 24th, all the way to March the 15th. We've only had three, literally three red days uh, in the last two and a half weeks going almost into three weeks. And, and, and a lot of traders, uh, a lot of traders are trying to pick the top, a lot of the same way a lot of traders try to pick the bottom. It, it's not a game of guessing. And, and I, I've been kind of reiterating this point over and over again for many, many years. The same way something just doesn't make sense on the downside when you think something is oversold and it keeps on going lower and lower and lower, and the same thing to the upside. But there, there is a point that there is seller exhaustion. This is kind of where we ran into uh, all the way back to uh, March the 14th, March the 15th, and there's also something called buyer's exhaustion. And again, it's a little too early right now to kind of tell if this was like this exhaustion gap that the buyers just had nothing left. You had three weeks nearly of massive, massive buying and now the market needs a rest. Or is this something that you can turn to weeks from now and nobody's going to know until that happens. You can make a, you can make a determination, well, this was the start of a rounding top, the same way this was the start of a rounding bottom, this was a stop of a rounding top, and then everybody could be uh, the, you know, everybody could be the, the you know, the, the guesser, uh, and you could win the internet for that day. We don't know that, right? We absolutely don't know that. But when you look at names that had, I mean, just ridiculous runs that mirror uh, the cues, you see a name like Apple, right? Apple, this was its first down day, and you could call down a dollar a down day. This is literally its first down day in the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 days in a row, uh, first down day. So it really does show you how super aggressive everything has been. If you go through the NASDAQ 100, you're pretty much gonna see every chart that's looking like that. But as, as we all know, even when we were sell bias for three months, everything doesn't go straight up, right? And just the way everything on the bottom didn't go straight down. And now the cues are left with uh, a, a kind of a situation of what happens next, right? And there's two cases that could be made. And, and again, I, I try to, there's days that I'm super, um, I, I'm super aggressive with my opinion on one side of the market because th sometimes the market just screams at you, you're biased in that direction. But I try to, I, I try to make a, a, a feasibility study based on facts, right? Not where I think the market can go. And I, I think we're all in agreement that the market's a little bit tired, maybe a little bit extended, needs a little bit of a rest. And you can see kind of in the price action uh, over the last several days, right? Uh, and you could also make a big argument. And here is kind of what it is. There's two sides of this tape right now, okay? Uh, the bullish side is, well, let me start out from the bearish side. The bearish side is 
this is a chicken without a head market. What I mean by that is if you can make a, a, a mental image that there's something called when the chicken runs without a head, right? The body could still run around while the head is decapitated. And so you can make a case here that what well, you saw yesterday, right? These big moves on, you know, pretty much crappy names. Let's be honest. Let's, let's be honest with what they are. You know, the hoods of the world, uh, the fubus of the world, right? They had these really, really big moves uh, yesterday. And there was a whole bunch of them, right? A lot of speculation money. A lot of the meme names uh, were all going nuts. Potato, potato, right? And you can make, there's a, there's a case study that says when the market is ready to kind of tap out, at least tap out short term, the case study is the worst, the drek of the drek, right? In Yiddish, the drek of the drek, the crap of the crap always comes out and always makes the last run. That's kind of like the, 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 the climax, right? Um, the bull case is, well, what the hell are you talking about? It really does show you how strong the market is. Our leaders are leading, right? Our leaders are leading. Um, everything is good. And it's just a matter of time. Even the crap uh, gets pulled up. So that there's a dynamic here. There, there's definitely a dynamic here that you can have an intelligent conversation, try to make, uh, try to state your point and see where, you know, and see what, you know, who's right, right? Who's right and who ultimately plays out. The great part about what we do as non-biased traders that trade both long and short, we don't have to guess. We don't have to make that determination. But now we have to start looking at facts. And, and here's the facts, right? Until we break below, and, and, and apparently uh, from last night's video, and I appreciate all the emails and stuff. I didn't know we had a video last night until I got 3,000 emails saying, hey, Dan, thanks for, you know, for the, I had no idea we had a video. But the one thing that I always talk about, and it was, it was in the video yesterday, sometimes you have to make the most basic determination of right and wrong bull, bull or bear by yourself. And un until we get below this five-day moving average on the Qs, you have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Even today, when the NASDAQ pulled in 177 points compared to the run that we had, there was no fear, right? There was no fear. I think even the, the biggest the biggest bear will, will admit there was absolutely no fear. There's a lot of bounces. They try to get the stocks down. They bounced off a lot of levels. So until we settle below the five day, and you can see here just visually, right? You don't have to be the greatest technician in the world. You can see every single time we came to the five day, what happened, right? We bounced, we bounced, we bounced, we bounced, we bounced, we bounced, we bounced. So until we have that conversation at the five day moving average on the closing basis, you have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. The problem is all these stocks are dead tired, right? So when you go into tomorrow's session, what's the most big thing about it? what's the most basic thing for a stock to go lower, right? For a basic thing for a stock to go lower, a stock needs to take out the previous day's low, right? And when you look at the cues, we held yesterday's low very, very well. So we can't even have a conversation that we're going quote unquote lower before we start losing the five day moving average and we confirm the previous day's channels. That didn't happen yet, right? But you also have to be prepared for it as well. It's very, very tough for me to turn around and say, hey guys, after 12 days of selling off, I, I need to be long at Apple at 180. You don't, I mean, you don't need to be long 180. You wanna be long at 180, but look at the move. The stock has gone from 140 to 180. It's tired, it needs to go sideways. You could turn around on Tesla, we'll go into the individual pivots in a second and say, Tesla's going higher, Tesla's going higher. Tesla needs to at least, you know, at least test this five day support. You see how it tested the five day support kind of mirroring the queue? hit the five-day bounce, hit the five-day bounce, hit the five-day bounce, hit the five-day bounce. We actually need a test, right? Before we go macro higher, we need a kind of a test on everything just to get a macro structure down for these stocks to kind of reset a little bit, get their feet under them, and then finally start going higher. But that's the problem, right? Going into tomorrow's session, you know, it's like, you know, it's like ordering a filet mignon and they bring it out and it's ice cold. You, you kind of don't get a good feel about tomorrow just because of the, you know, of the, we, we've been talking about the last five minutes. We don't have enough, we don't have enough power, right? We don't have enough aggression because everything is so tired to go higher, but there's absolutely no fear right now to go lower. So tomorrow is one of those days that, you know, I did my chart work and I turn around, I go, yeah, I like some ideas for tomorrow. You know, like look at Amgen. Amgen has a long base here, right? A really, really long base here. 
the top of this channel here and today's high is pretty much mirrored here. You know, if Amgen, and again, Amgen is really not tied into the, to the high beta names. If Amgen starts taking out this channel here, yeah, it, it could go higher. I think it looks good, right? There's no fear in the market. Look at a name like Danaher, right? And this is kind of where, where you, you turn around and say, Dan, you're really reaching. Yeah, I am really reaching because that's the point. Everything else is so damn extended um, that it's very, very tough to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt and find value. So yeah, I am kind of reaching, but look at a chart like Danaher, right? Danaher is sitting, uh, it hits supply twice. You see that? It hit daily supplies twice. Maybe if Danaher finally gets above the supply zone, it could, you know, it could wake up. But at the other side of the spectrum, I understand that gravity is real as well. So for example, look at Apple, right? 12 days in a row, first red day. You know what? I will be watching Apple tomorrow to the downside, just in case, right? If you look at the bottom two channels here, if you look at the 60 minute view, right? If you look at the 60 minute view, you can see a pretty clean channel here, right? It keeps on bouncing off this bottom channel. If it loses this bottom channel, again, nobody's talking about, well, the stock's going back to the lows. This is not a conversation about that. It's just basically, look, it's a strong market. The stock is tired. Maybe comes in two, three, four points, especially if they pull the market, if everything gets a rest. We're just looking for a trade. Nobody's talking about Armageddon. The stock looks great, right? We're just trying to take advantage of some price action. Even a name like Tesla, right? Look at Tesla today. Tesla had a, you know, we'll get to the pivots in a second. There was a really good pivot on Tesla today. It stopped at, you know, it stopped at this week's highs. Hey, look, maybe again, maybe if it starts losing the bottom channel here, at least it could test the five day moving average. Again, nobody's talking about Tesla Q or Tesla's going to zero. We're just trying to take advantage of some channels to the ups, to the downside, just in case there are channels to the downside. Again, I, I really don't have a good feel uh, for tomorrow's session. This is what we talk about, waiting for value, waiting for things to play out organically and waiting for you know your sweet spot. Again, it's one of those situations if you're a professional trader and you're watching these channels like an Apple, like a Tesla, like an Amazon, they all kind of look the same, right? Look at Google, right? Google's sitting on its five day. If it loses the five, maybe it gets slammed as well. But, but, but the point is, again, I think the market's healthy. I think any potential retrace is healthy. And the most important part is let the market reset let everybody take a deep breath. And once they start trapping shorts on rising support, then and only then we can start talking about a healthy continuation uh, rally uh, going into the spring. Well, where we're already in the spring, but going into the summer. So I'm kind of intermediate for tomorrow. I got some longs I like, I got some shorts I like, but I, again, I don't have a great vibe about tomorrow. So I'll kind of, you know, I'll kind of play it as I see it uh, for tomorrow's session. Other than that, you know, again, aggressive session. You had some names moving up, you had some names uh, that you know that never got to their channel, but the most important part is the preparation part. Again, not you're not going to find every trade, you're not going to find every stock. So that's why do your homework, find exactly what you want to trade, and wait for those channels to confirm. And the, and the cheat sheet is, and the continuation of the cheat sheet is, stocks that are getting massive option flow over and over and over again that are confirming channels. Those are the ones. That are, that are gonna give you the highest probability to go. Like for example, uh, AFRM today, they were coming, you know, they were coming for the 50s, they were coming for the 51s, the 52s. Uh, look at AFRM, uh, 49 needs to build, right? 49 needs to build, traded perfectly right to uh, the 51 area. I'll show you in a second, uh, but nice move on AFR, uh, AFRM off 49. Uh, crowd, again, preparation, that's all it was. They were coming for the 230, uh, the 230 calls right out the gate. Uh, 226 rejected three times, needs to build. Here was crowd, right? Here was crowd, it took out the 26. You see how it got rejected three times the 26? It took out the 26, went right to the 231 supply. You know, perfect move. I mean, the market's been really good. NVIDIA is so weird, man. NVIDIA, I tell you, man, there's massive 300 calls coming in on this thing. And this thing just can't confirm the top of the channel. Uh, FUBU, I was watching continuation from yesterday's move, never got there. Hood, I was watching continuation from yesterday's move, I never got there. Uh, this is when you kind of figured out that the, the market was going to, you know, possibility going to rest today. Square got upgraded today by Goldman Sachs. Never got up to, never got to that 149 supply to go, but so that was kind of your first clue. Uh, crowd again, nice move. Crowd take on the way up. Punch a shot at 231. That's exactly where it got to. Great job uh, for all you guys who took crowd. Perfect move. AFRM into the 51 supply. Got to sell that area, right? That was the high of the day. So great job there. This was definitely the move of the day. Uh, well, at least. 
uh, you know, again, you can show you that how big, how how not big the day could have been. Uh, but you know, things got really pulled out. So uh, 1100 and 1115 big areas now. Massive buyer came in for the 1150 calls. Beautiful move. 11 1100 went right to uh, 1114 area. Got stalled out again. So this 1115. Uh, going forward is going to be good. Again, another perfect example of Lucid, right? Another stock, they, they started coming in for the um, short-term $30 expiration, 2760 needs to build. I said, look, there's a little bit of supply here, 2803, 2815, that's literally the high of the day. So what it, you, you have to know your supply zones uh, so you, you're not caught off guard on anything. Uh, RBLX never got to 53. Again, look, now, you know, excellent action. Now we wait. And I said, look, that 1115 area uh, becomes huge. So look, value, there is, there's definitely value. You know, I, I, I could definitely see the day play out two ways tomorrow. Either is a res day, or if we could start confirming some sneaky downside channels, we might get some pretty good action, some cash flow action uh, to the downside tomorrow until the market further uh, consolidates. So that's it, guys. Have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.